This video was sponsored by Just Answer, a better way to reach professionals anytime you need help. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a generator transfer switch yourself. Now this model is the easiest one to install, uses just four wires. You need to have one of these switches if you want to be able to power a hardwired circuit in your house. For most people, that circuit is going to be their heating system, because if you lose power and you've got a generator, you won't be able to get the electricity to your heat without one of these switches. And these are kind of universal. They work with gasoline type generators or a battery power station, even the big ones like the EcoFlow Delta Pro. And this is exactly what my friend bought, but he wants to be able to tie it in to run his heat anytime he loses power. All electrical work carries some risk or even the chance of death, so decide for yourself if this is something you want to do or just use this video as a general help guide. We started by removing the cover on his electrical panel and then we used some painter's tape to mark the circuit breaker that runs his heating system. Next we decided to turn the main breaker off. This is just going to make it safer while we're working, but you want to keep in mind that there still is electricity coming into the bottom of the panel. And this panel is reversed from what you might normally see. It's got the feed coming in from the bottom, but this doesn't affect how you install the switch, even if your feed was coming from the top. The switch we're installing is made by Reliance. It's a single outlet 120 volt circuit that's going to run most people's heating systems or other circuits in your house, things like refrigerators or a microwave. And Reliance isn't the only company that makes these. This one is called Easy Generator Switch. It's priced about the same and it works just as well. And the main difference between the two switches is the Reliance includes that cabled pigtail. That means you can mount the switch about a foot away from your electrical panel. And because my friend's is recessed, he didn't really have much room to work. So we're going to use the Reliance for this install. Next, we needed to find a location to mount the switch. Now this one is a surface mounted switch, meaning it can mount on top of a stud or a piece of plywood like this. And this model switch is completely pre-wired. The only thing you have to do is take the back cover off and then you screw that to the stud of the plywood and then you just reinstall the front portion of the switch and screw everything together. They do make transfer switches that can do six or 10 circuits or more, but they're more expensive and they're definitely more complicated to install. With the switch physically mounted and looking good, now we've just got to connect it to our electrical panel. And to do that, we've got to feed those wires that are inside that metal tube directly into the panel. And you do that by going through what's called a knockout. Unfortunately, you don't have to drill anything. You take a screwdriver, find one of the available knockouts, and then hit it with a hammer until the disc pops out. Next, we're going to feed our wires through that knockout all the way in until we get to the metal portion of the cable. You'll notice there are threads in the end. And now we're going to insert a nut over the wires until it gets to the end of that cable and then just spin that nut down the threads until it gets tight. But you're never gonna get it tight enough by hand, so one trick is to use the edge of a screwdriver, and you're gonna kinda tap the edge, and that's gonna let you tighten it down just that little bit more to keep it completely secure. Now your kit's wires might be pre-stripped, but this one wasn't, so you just need to strip the insulation off of each of the four wires. The first two wires are gonna be really easy. They're the white and the green, and that's your neutral wire, which is the white, and your green, which is the ground but they're actually gonna get connected to the same place on your electrical panel. Now most panels have a ground or a neutral bar on the sides. Now you can see here he's got these existing white wires along with the ground. And this video isn't a replacement for an instruction manual or your switch might be different. Electrical panels can be pretty packed, so to make it a little bit easier, we bend each one of these wires about 90 degrees to make putting it into those terminals a little bit easier. And I also recommend that you use two different screws, one for the ground and one for your neutral. After you insert each wire, you want to take care to make sure they're completely tightened down. Now we've just got two connections left, so we want to go over to the circuit breaker that we want to power, and again, that's our heating system. So we want to use the screwdriver and loosen up the wire that's feeding the breaker. We're going to carefully slide that black wire out, and we need to connect that black wire to the black wire on a switch. And to do that, we're going to use either a wire nut, or in this case, I'm going to use one of my Wagos. These are going to give you a secure connection and you can remove them at any point in the future. The only thing you want to keep in mind when using them, the wire has to be the exact right length. And if you don't know what the length is, just flip the connector over and this is actually a guide on the back. Just match up the length, then cut it to size, and then you'll insert it into the Wago and finally close that lever down to give you an instant connection. And you can certainly use a wire nut for this connection as well, but you want to make sure that you do it correctly. Now we've just got that one wire left and that's our red one. That's going to be inserted into the original circuit breaker. And once you've got it completely under the terminal, you want to tighten it down securely. Now make sure that you're not getting any of the red insulation under the connection. 
It's a good idea to double check all your work, make sure those connections are good, and that any screws you loosened are now tight. Once you've done that, you can reinstall your electrical panel and go ahead and turn that main breaker on. Now we're ready to hook up our power, and in this case, he's gonna use his EcoFlow Delta Pro, and he's pretty psyched because he's been using this thing for camping and other jobs around the house, but for the first time, now he can run a hardwired circuit. And the great thing about a battery unit is there's no maintenance. You can run it from inside the house because there are no fumes. And using this unit is easy. You can leave it in position all the time or just grab it anytime there's a power outage and connect it up. Plug one end of the extension cable into the transfer switch and the other goes into the front mounted AC outlets on the EcoFlow Delta Pro. The transfer switch has three positions, off, line, and gen. Gen is generator and that's when you want to use the EcoFlow to run the actual heating system. When it's off, everything is off. And when it's in the line position, that means it's getting its power directly from the street. So if the power goes out, just throw it to the gen position and turn on your generator and now it's running your heating system or other appliance. And the rest of his house has the electricity on, so you might be wondering how is this safe? And that's exactly what these transfer switches do. They prevent any type of back feeding and they're the only safe and code approved way to use any type of backup power inside your house. You can see on the display, it says this unit will run for seven hours. You should see around 21 hours because most heating systems don't run continuously. For each hour of the day, they might run for about 30 minutes or even as little as 15, depending on the outside temperature. But he opted to buy a second battery which connects right into the Delta Pro and that's gonna double the amount of runtime. So with just a single charge on both of these batteries, he should be able to run his heat for almost two days. You can also expand this with an additional battery, tripling the amount of runtime, or you could get solar panels that'll charge these things up every day. Now, if you're in a situation where you expect outages that are much longer than that, you can certainly get a gas generator as well. Just make sure you're maintaining the machine and that you have enough gasoline on hand to handle the outage. Single circuit transfer switches like this are the best way to be prepared for a power outage, but you've got to do it before the outage happens. What if you want to make sure that these switches are 100% legal? Well, the easiest way to find out is to use the sponsor of today's video, Just Answer. Just Answer is a service that connects you with licensed professionals around the country 24 hours a day. This is a really cool service where you can just ask a question and they find a licensed professional to answer it. It can be a lawyer, doctor, or even an electrician. Within just 20 minutes, I had an answer back telling me exactly what I wanted to know and I could continue to ask questions as often as I wanted and I would be sure that I was getting professional, accurate answers. They're offering a seven day trial for viewers of the channel. You can check it out for yourself, ask as many questions as you want and see if there's some value in the service that you could use at home.